Your eyes saw me. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even then, the night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Search me, God, and know my heart, and lead me in the way everlasting. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Good morning, good morning to God be the glory for all the things that he is doing. Amen. Good morning to each and every one of you on this Thursday morning at 7.03 a.m. We are here from Total New Jersey where the temperature is 30 degrees right now. Amen. It is January, so what can we expect? Happy New Year to those who I may have not seen or spoken to since the New Year have come in. We thank you for gathering with us this morning. Amen. As you greet each other, as you come in, good morning, Sister Tina. Good morning, uh, Cousin Pam, Miss Pam. Amen. We thank God for you guys being a part of our morning manner this morning. More than ever, we need morning manner this morning. Amen. After yesterday, after all the things that we witnessed, experienced, amen. And we're praying for the whole nation. We're praying for this world. Uh, we're praying for our brothers and sisters who are in the D.C., uh, Washington area. Amen. Um, God is still in control. That's all I can say. God is still in control. Enemy will always show his hand. He will show his face. Amen. He showed us a lot of things. We're still in shock. We really are in shock. But I do applaud and I appreciate even when they got back together and they gathered. And I usually don't watch a lot of those type of settings that come together unless it's something very relevant to what we're doing and the things that we're trying to accomplish. But it was so important yesterday, amen, when they came together. Uh, whether they were sincere or not, as far as the things they said and they shared, it was very heartwarming because it was even those who were Republicans, um, the things they said, because at the end of the day, it's about human decency. I mean, I don't care about what side of the party you're on. It's about what it is about what we need to do for God, amen, and do for the best of all people, amen. So let's continue to pray for each other, amen, as God continues to take us through not just this pandemic, but all the things that we're contending with in this season of our lives, amen. And we thank God for seeing you this morning. Thank God for seeing our brother James Simon. Amen. Thank you, brother James. I don't know if he was with us the other day. Amen. As we were talking about the fast that's coming up, and we would share some of that information with those who are morning manner. Amen. Um, it's interesting time. I'm excited. I am truly excited 
about this upcoming fast, about this prayer, um, that we, you know, the prayer that's going to be part of it, because I'm ready for a refreshing. I'm ready for a renewal. I'm ready for something different. Um, we've been through this, this, let me pull this up just a little bit, this pandemic for the you know, last 10 months or so, and it's been challenging. Amen. Doing the same old thing, the same routine to stay safe as much as possible. Amen. And then you hear different stories about what people are going through, even those who have guarded themselves. Amen. Unfortunately, um, one pastor friend, I remember him saying, um, this, this virus have no respect to person. Amen. Whether you save or not save, no matter how you're living. Amen. People have been affected by it. Amen. Some people worn masks and some people have, uh, practice social distancing, but yet they're falling victim to some of this just in a, uh, in a moment of things of that nature. So let's continue to really honestly pray for each other. Let's sincerely pray that word. You know, we say pray for me in the past, but now pray for me in the now. It means a whole lot different. I mean, honestly, pray for me. Amen. I mean, as we pray for one another, don't be afraid to ask for prayers. If you feel some kind of way, uh, it's no shame. You know, sometimes pride will get in the way and cause us not to seek the prayer that we need because we feel that we're in a certain position or a certain place, certain place in life that we don't need prayer. We all need prayer. God knows we all need prayer. We need uh, prayer for our strength. We need prayer for vision, for sight, for our families. Amen. And we thank all of you for being here. This is a safe place. This is a place you can come to at 7 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursday and receive the unadulterated word of God. Amen. I'm simply here to share what thus says the Lord, that what I say and what I share, it will enhance your life. It will draw you closer to Christ. It's not about me. It's not about Michael Odom. Amen. This is simply about the God that I choose to serve, the Jesus that have died for my sins. Amen. That has given me a, the right to the tree of life. That's given me a chance that has imparted grace unto my life. And that same grace that I have, amen, I want to share it with the world. I want them to know who Jesus is because I know that the answer is in him. Amen. And isn't it ironic? It's never ironic, really, when it comes to God. It's not coincidental as well. It's godly timing. Amen. That today we're talking, uh, continue in talking about peace. Amen. As we talk about this particular part of our study in Ephesians um, 6 and 14 and 15, and where it told us to stand therefore, having girded our waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And that is our focus part of the scripture today is having shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We started on uh, Tuesday with this portion of this uh, study and we continue today. And we left off when we talk about the word shod, you know, S-H-O-D, amen. It means to bind under one's feet. It means to be bond. It means to tie, to wind to knit or be with one. Let me grab my phone in case they have to reach me and give me messages <laughs> because sometimes things be taking place and I'm not aware of it, amen. So I can like to keep that near me, amen. That's why they communicate. But to knit, to be at one uh, with one another. It also has to do with your walk. The shot means that how you walk out your daily life from day to day, how we walk our life from day to day. In this year, and we have deemed it as a time of refreshing and God has laid in our heart based on the scripture in Acts 3, 19 and 20. Amen. It's time for refreshing. It's time from being stuck. Um, when we talk about refresh, that means that, you know, something existed, but some way it got kind of stuck. It got kind of stale. It was kind of dormant. It wasn't moving like it should have been moving. And we often equate a lot of times refreshing, amen, with a drink of water. When I came up with the flyer for this thing for this month, I used something that was near and dear to me because whenever I do that, I come up with something that God lays on my heart. I try to visualize what that means in a picture because sometimes a picture can speak a thousand words. And it took me back to my childhood being in the inner city in the urban area where on a hot day when the pool was not available, it wasn't open, we would go, they would open up the fire hydrant. Right, it's dangerous that it is. You think about now because we was out there in bare feet on the ground, amen. But God preserved us and God kept us, amen. But that was refreshing. That was the highlight to be in that 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 fire hydrant to cool off and cool down, amen. And the same thing with God is like after you've gone through what all you've gone through, there's time for a refreshing because it's almost like 
you're spiritually drained, you're mentally and emotionally tired, amen, and I need a refreshing, amen. Sometimes, you know, even as we, we pray, and I know we miss church, we miss fellowship. God knows we miss fellowship. I, I, I'm gonna tell you something, I bet your attendance be a 100% next time, amen. We will never, ever, ever take for granted the doors of those churches being open, how much it means to us, how important it is to us. But again, it's a test, it is a test of our faith, amen, and we must continue to wear the full armor of God. The full armor of God is not an outfit you wear to church, amen. It's an outfit you wear every day, amen. You may take your carnal clothes, <laughs> whatever you may look at, and think about how powerful that is, because oftentimes, and it is in, in essential, and it is important in honor and respect and reverence of the house of God, that what we, you know, how we carry ourselves and what we wear, it sometimes can be an indication of where we are in life, amen. And, but we can't focus so much on the outer person. We can't focus on the fact that I'm wearing a sweater or I'm wearing a collar that does not change me as a person. It was so ironic one time. I remember we had just finished service. I think it was the first communion. I mean, first Sunday in December. And I was leaving out and Brother James remembered this because I saw him um, when I left out. So I stopped at the store. It looked like a Krause's, but it's not really a Krause's. So I went in there and I think I went to get some juice or something I had to get. And one of my coworkers, and I still have my collar on, because I just re left right at the uh, service. And one of my coworkers from work didn't know who I was. She's a Caucasian lady, and she gave me the Catholic sign. <laughs> and then she looked up, she said, Michael. And, and, it, and it was the ironic part about that. When she saw the, the collar, she saw the black, and she saw the cross, it's like she saw another person. Then she saw, oh, it's Michael. But I'm always Michael. I'm always, I'm always, that's who I am all the time. Whether I'm wearing a collar or wearing a sweater. So again, what we wear on the outside, but if I wear this sweater, and I could, this sweater could cost $5,000 or it could cost $2, amen. If I'm not wearing the full armor of God under it. So again, I'm not impressed by your long dress. I'm not impressed that you got your shirt buttoned up to here. I, I appreciate that. God bless you, amen. I'm not impressed that you may not have all of this rouge and maybe all of these bling blings all over the place. That's good, it's no, but it's, that's truly not a true indication of where your heart is or where your walk is. So what is important is what I'm wearing under what I have on, amen. And then here's the other part, amen. Uh, sometimes we wear things because we may not feel comfortable or like where we are and we don't like the way we look. So we wear things to kind of make us look a little bit better. Amen. And we, we call them girdles or body shapers or whatever you want to call them. Men wear them too, so don't let them fool you as well, right? So we're going to wear things to compliment us to make us feel better. But whether you wear that or not, you still got to wear the forearm of God because that's what's important. Because in that moment, it makes you feel okay about yourself. Amen. Even what we wear on the outside, you know how it is, we get dressed up. The truth of the matter is you feel good about yourself. You put on something things and you look good in it. You put on a certain hat, you wear certain earrings, you wear certain glasses, jewelry. It makes you feel good about yourself. But we know that's temporary peace. What we need is more permanent peace. We need peace that's eternal. Amen. We need peace that goes beyond our understanding. We need peace because it's like, I'm going to feel good in that moment, but what happens when I can't afford that? And why do I buy things that I can't afford? Because I need a peace. And that peace, sometimes I need the approval of the people. That brings me peace. But we have to be very, very careful of that. So when we talk about shard uh, with the preparation, shard your feet, shard your feet, it means bind it to your feet, put it under your feet to walk out every day. It's a reminder that I should have this on every day. When you get dressed in the morning, I know you put on your shoes, you put on your red bottoms. That's cool, amen? But let's make sure that what we're wearing as we walk this thing out is really about the peace of the gospel, amen? So then the next part is the preparation. With the preparation, because it said, charge your feet with the preparation. With the preparation. You can't get the peace without the preparation. You can't really get to the peace, amen, properly without the prep, uh, the preparation. You you experience temporal peace, for example, being, being in church, amen, being around the saints and hearing the gospel and hearing the music and shouting and praising God. That's wonderful. And in that moment, it will bring us a type of peace, amen. But if that peace, if that, that's, that experience is not connected with a life, if your experience in church is not connected to a life, that you're striving, and I say this, that you're striving to live, that peace will only be temporary. What you experience in that fellowship and in that service, in that gathering, even if you go and I serve an usher board, that gives make me feel a certain kind of way. If I'm in charge of the flowers at the altar, that makes me feel a certain way. If I'm serving pastor that day, it makes me feel a certain way. 
It makes you feel, if I'm doing the sound of I'm, I'm doing security, it may make you feel a certain way. But once I disconnect myself from that, I no longer have that peace that I should have. This peace is not like something that's temporary. It does not fade away. This should be something that wherever you go, there shall be peace. But if what I do in the church building does not match up what I'm attempting, and I always say that and I'm striving to do because that's what we practice. We practice. I do a math class. And one of the things I tell them is that uh, this is practice. I just said, this is the safe place for you guys. I said, in here, make all your mistakes. In here, you can miss free throws. That's the way I put it to them. I said, well, we go over these problems and don't be feeling embarrassed because these are adults. I said, don't feel embarrassed if you get the wrong answer. This is where you make your mistakes. It's when the test goes live. I want to make sure you're good. Same thing with us as we walk with God in our daily lives. You may stumble. You may trip. And then think about it. It's almost like a small child. You know how it is. <laughs> and I can imagine God saying this to us. Kids start playing. We get comfortable. Kids get comfortable, right? They shoes come loose. They so busy having fun. They are running around about to trip over their shoestrings. And sometimes that's what happens to us. We get lax, we get comfortable, and our shoestrings may come untied. Amen. Because that's how the life, that's how life is. And as I talk about this, this, this uh, symbolism of these shoes and how it fit with the Roman soldiers, you will see where there's other parts as well. Because you can't wear everything everywhere. Amen. Everything is not fit for everywhere. Amen. There are certain shoes that are for certain situations. If you know you're going for a walk or you're going for a run, I would not really recommend unless you're a soldier in the army to wear boots. Amen. I would not recommend you wearing stilettos when you're doing certain things. I would not recommend you wearing slippers when you're doing construction work. So it has to be the proper thing for the proper situation. And these were particular things that you can just wear anything. You can't choose them. You can't pick and choose how your shoes are going to look when you're in preparation for what God is going to do. The preparation means to have a firm foundation or have a solid knowledge of something. When you come to fellowship, when you come to Bible study, when you come to morning manner, part of morning manner is preparation. I'm, I'm Hopefully this is preparing you for your day and that what you get fed here will last a while between your, your Bible class, between your Sunday service, between your personal devotionals. You got to constantly be preparing. Amen. If you've ever gone to school for anything, you have to study and you have to prepare to take the test. What happens if you don't prepare? Amen. And and because we do a lot of job placement and people would choose certain schools, um, the counselors, the, the counselors, their counselors can't tell them what schools to go to. I will give an opinion about it because if I know of a certain reputation of a certain school and I know that you're striving to do certain things, I don't want you to be disappointed because I've found where there's some schools, all they want is the money and they're not really properly preparing these students for the examination or the test. And they feel like, oh, I went to school for eight months. I went to school for nine months. But when it comes time to prepare for the certification, they did not get the proper preparation. They don't know the information. They're not familiar with the information. And therefore, when it comes time for the test, they don't do well and they're disappointed. It's the same thing with this. Don't just go to church to go to church. Don't go to church because I just missed the saint. Don't go to church just to sing on a choir. Don't go to church because I got to serve this Sunday. Go to church to serve. Go to church to be the saints. Do all that. But I need to know Jesus Christ as Lord over my life. I need to know him as my savior, as my deliverer. I need to know him as a doctor in the sick room. I need to know him as a lawyer. I need to know him, my experience, and I need to be prepared for that. That's what church is prepare you for. If you shout all service and you praise God all service, that's cool. But what, what was the lesson? What was the lesson? That's what I mean. It's like, I went to school. I went to school. I put in the hours, but you never learned anything. So you take what you do in practice out here, what you're experiencing right now, what you're going through and what you've gone through for the last 10 months. Amen. The last 11 months, whatever you've gone through, every situation you've come across, every heartache you've gone across was for parents. So when you come here, it is my prayer that what is taught and shared here helps you to understand better. God, what is that? It don't always click in. It don't always click. And I can share with you some person, even this morning in my prayer time, God, God got me on this different clock right now. It's a different clock. He got me on waking me up and going to bed. I, I ain't know what's age, but he's waking me up. And this revelation he gave me, amen, uh, about myself. A couple, I'm going to tell you, honestly, and it's, during this last few months, I'm like, God, okay, what are you doing? And it makes me quiet in my spirit because now he's showing me things about myself. And a lot of times, even in preparing for these lessons, and this has been different. In this season 
for me, I can't speak for other preachers and pastors, it's been different. My my relationship with God is more, is more, even more intimate. And I thank God for, for I remember down through the years where many times he has kind of stopped me in my steps, even as I'm studying. This is real talk, and I hope I'm helping somebody in this. There's been times I've been grinding. <laughs> I'm going to use that word, grinding, to do what I have to do for the ministry and keep things balanced. And there's been times I've been studying, and God will just nudge me on the shoulder and say, are you studying to preach? Or are you studying to know me? Why we do what we do? Because, see, you could be doing the right thing the wrong way. It don't necessarily have to be sin but you're not getting the most effective thing out of it in your preparation. So when it comes time for the tests, when it comes time for the trials, when it comes time for certain things, then you realize, oh, I wasn't quite ready. So in the preparation part of this, it means having a firm foundation. What is your walk with God based on? Is it based on somebody else's testimony, somebody else knowing God for themselves? Oh, you know, Reverend such and such, a pastor such and such, a sister such and such, they love God. But what about your relationship with God? It got to be based on a firm foundation. It got to be based on, 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 on a revelation that you have about Jesus Christ. Personal revelation. And re revelation ain't something always deep that's that's going to make people say, ooh. And when people say, catch this, that's cute and all. But some things, when God gives you a revelation about yourself, it becomes very quiet. Because I know a couple of these revelations he dropped in my heart about me. I said, I, I had to look around. I had to kind of, I said, okay, this is, and it takes a while to process some of this stuff. So when we come together, we gather together like this, hopefully the prayer is that it's, it's, it's touching, it's connecting with something God has already said. I'm not looking for a prophet to tell me something I never heard. I'm not always looking for a prophet to confirm what God has already said, said. but sometimes I get that confirmation. Amen. I'm not, I'm going, I'm not looking for the confirmation. Because a lot of this stuff is, is, is almost for me. And I want to speak personally. It's like, okay, God, if you let me, you let me know that, okay, what you said was what you said. It's more for that. It's not about, it's not about fame and fortune. He's not, listen, it's not about putting you up in the lights and all of that. God is concerned about your soul. It ain't about houses. It's not about cars. It's not about a man or a woman. It's about your soul. You, what, what good is to have a man? What good is to have a, a 15 room house, amen, and your soul is on its way to hell? That, that, that's not what we're striving here. We're striving that we have peace in this time, amen, in the midst of all this chaos. So as we talk about this, the preparation is knowing the Prince of Peace, is knowing his word, knowing that I can grab a word. There's a scripture, even there's one scripture. If you got to, if you got to rock out, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want for the rest of your life, do that. But there's more to God than that. Because here's the revelatory knowledge of that particular scripture. As you grow in Christ, it will change. It will change. It will change. The word don't change, but your understanding and revelation of where you are will change and stands with that. You should spiritually grow. You should be some spiritual maturity in your life. I pray that what I'm saying today is challenging every fiber of your being. Amen. It's causing you to consider and reconsider some things in your life, not to convict you unto feeling guilty, but convict you to say, God really loves me. All this time, the enemy had me believe in this lie. So here, when we get to know Jesus, the word gospel simply means good tidings or good news. The peace that I get is because of this good news. I'm, I'm, listen, I, I know right now, you want, you want, we want some good news. Call me with some good news. I mean, I was in a meeting yesterday. <laughs> It's not even funny. I'm in a meeting and I, and I go to my phone and I'm looking like, you know, Trump supporters attack. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I look a little bit. Then I kept looking at it some more. And I'm like, what is going on? Then I see him in Nancy Pelosi's office. I'm like, Lord, we need some good news. And saints, that's what we should be carrying. Do not be a carrier of gossip. Be a carrier of the gospel. Be a carrier of good. Don't be, don't be that person that's always got something to say, always involved in something. We need some good news. And this is what the world needs from. So when we look at the word peace, and, and it's a simple Jewish word that comes from the word shalom. A lot of times when they greet each other, they say shalom. Amen. To one another. And it's more, tell somebody it's more than a feeling. Peace is more than a feeling. So what he's telling us, God is saying that the gospel, you are to bind it to your feet. To cover every step you take is peace. When you walk, peace. When you walk, peace. No matter what I'm going over, peace. And don't let those shoes be loose because they get loose because you're going to go over some situations and some circumstances that are unfavorable. But I need to walk in peace. Peace is one of the most wonderful words in the Bible. Jesus is our prince 
a peace. Amen. But what we're talking about is more than a feeling of being calm or being free of conflict. It's more than just being calm. Because we say, oh, I got such peace. That's why it says in the word that this peace will go beyond our own understanding. I know I've personally experienced this personally, and I only can speak my own experience and hopefully it's helping someone. Amen. I remember going through conflict. I remember going through difficult times. I remember going through things that broke, were really trying to break my heart. It really, really was. Whether it was just life circumstances or just going through things. Amen. And I found myself, I found myself at peace. And I remember telling uh, Bishop Senior, I said, um, I was dealing with this situation. I was in a conflict with this individual and I had to settle some personal business with him. And it was almost like he had the upper hand and he's the guy was going off of me. And I'm like, okay, bro, you ain't about to do this. But I really was at peace. And I was, I, and I was, I was confused. I was confused because I didn't understand. I said, what was I upset? Was, was I not concerned enough? Or what's wrong with me? Or something with my children or something like that. I'm like, and I'd be at peace. I used to feel bad that it's like, well, I'm not worried. So we so used to being worried and, and conflict all the time. We know he says because you've been praying. He said because you've been praying. Now when these things are come, because now you're building up your armor. The enemy can't come in like that. You see him, and that's the amazing thing. You could you, when you're walking in what you're supposed to walk. It's more than just walking this thing. Walking walking this thing out is is not more about you you not in sin, but you at peace. The reason why we end up in sin because we ain't at peace. The reason we end up in sin because we don't have no joy. You're looking for joy and you're looking for peace in all the wrong places. And it's temporal. In that moment, oh yeah, I'm having a good time. You know, but it's temporal. And the part that you feed is your flesh. And your flesh like, oh yeah, feed it. We're going to have a good time. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And yet, in that moment, it's going to feel like a good time. And it may be a good time. But then when you come off of whatever you on, it is what it is. You still got to deal with the situation. But when I got peace on the inside... I could face the problem. So it means it means it's mean more than just simple peace. It's a complete peace. Somebody say complete peace. Shalom means complete peace. It's a feeling, it's a it's a feeling of contentment. It's a feeling of completeness. It's a feeling of holding. Think about that. When the last time you felt whole? When the last time you felt good about yourself? When the last time you looked around and you said, Yep, I got bills. I'm gonna I'm get to that. I'm gonna take care of that. You know what? My kids, my husband, my wife my job, but God, we okay. Fight for your peace. Oh God, I, 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 I can shout right off of that, Sister Smith. You got to fight for your peace. You got to guard your peace. I, I'm gonna tell you, that's one of the things I learned in 2020. Guard your peace. Guard your peace. Because when people invade your peace, Amen. And I always say this, don't let people get in your head. <laughs> don't let people, don't give people space in your head. Don't treat, don't treat, and there's no knock on nobody that's in this program. Don't treat you like, like, like you, you got a section eight mind, a brain. No, treat this like this is, this is luxury apartments. Everybody can't occupy this space. But if you treat it, if you treat it like trailer trash, it's going to be trailer trash. If you treat it like it's just a, a, a little hut, it's going to be a hut. But you can't let everybody occupy this space in your heart or your mind. But what happens is because now your gates are down, your gates are weakened, the enemy can penetrate and get there and now they take up residence and now it's hard to get rid of them, amen? So we have to fight, you got to fight, you got to guard your peace. I'm telling you, in 2021, as we get ready for this fast, Brother Elijah, I'm telling you guys right now, don't, 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 this ain't the year to play. I think I know we've seen in 2020 and we said the calendar changed, things changed. I'm telling you right now, if you want to hear a prophecy, this is a prophecy. This consecration, this fast that's coming up is essential. God has been revealing some things to some of you, and we have not even had a conversation. He's been showing you some things in private, and it's kind of made you feel kind of bad about certain things. It caused you to check yourself. I'm telling you right now, the man of God is speaking right now. He's showing you little things. He's revealed certain things. Amen. Now he's saying it's time to refresh. Just like sometimes I'm trying to go online and things are going a little slow. It's going a little slow because you know what I don't do sometimes? I forget to refresh the computer. I will allow it to run, 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 run. It's running all night, running all day. So all these things are going on. So I expect when I get up, amen, that I press a button. You did all you need to do to prepare to present to these people. But you didn't refresh because now you're not working on at least 75%. You're down to 25, but you expected 85% performance. It's the same thing with us. We've been, we worn out. 2020 wore us out. Amen. You ain't got no, you need a refresh. 
You need to draw closer to God, amen. And 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 for some of you, uh, you've been doing a little fast here and there, but it's different. And I'm I'm gonna uh, if you could join us on Sunday, if you can't peek in or you go to the replay somewhere, I'm gonna be talking about fasting on Sunday. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna be going into but what fasting is, what's the purpose of fasting to prepare your heart. Also, before I forget, because it's only seven thirty, got about fifteen more minutes. Uh, this is our package for our fast. Amen is already prepared. Mother's Day, we will have it available. We will have it at the church for those who cannot print it out. And in here, it goes day by day. Those who are from far, we will post it that you could download it. Amen. And possibly print it out. Amen. And it tells you, welcome to the 21 day of fast for the year 2021. And in here, it, goes, it explains everything about you, about the fast, about the prayer as well. It goes all the scriptures for it. And it gives a daily prayer that we have. We will have a daily prayer call as well. So again, one of the things we're doing, we're inviting you. If you're you're, you're interested in being a part of it, if you're interested in being a part of it, please reach out, uh, inbox uh, either myself, uh, Minister Yolanda, uh, Deacon Shelley, and let them know, you know, I'm interested. Could you put me on the contact list um, for so that I can receive the daily prayers? Because we want to send out daily prayers to strengthen you. Amen. There be, as a matter of fact, it may be two prayers a day, and on some days it may be three prayers. Well, we're not playing. Amen. We are preparing for what God is about to do. It starts on next Monday. Next Monday, yes, next Monday to the end of the month, amen. So as we pay, cause we need that peace. I got to guard my peace, amen. We've all been in that place in our walk with God where we know we were walking in peace. So listen, don't wait for people to change. Don't wait, don't wait for them to get themselves together, amen. Get yourself together. That what they do don't affect you in a way that has been affecting you. God doesn't remove the people and he don't change sometimes the situation or the circumstance. He changed you. So you could deal with it. So listen, some there's some, there's some folks you ain't gonna get rid of. Amen. They ain't going nowhere. They they are anoint they are anointed to annoy you. They are anointed to annoy you. But what they're doing, God is using them, amen, to test you sometimes, to test you. And sometimes we ain't doing very well in these tests. You can't be cussing people out. You can't be telling everybody off. You can't be harboring things in your heart. I need to have peace. I need to be able to walk through here, through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, because I'm at peace. I'm telling you, you can walk in your job and they talk about layoffs, but I'm at peace. God, I need, I'm telling you, walk in peace. So when we talk about this complete peace, it's, it's, a, it's a feeling of contentment, completeness, well-being, and harmony. Shalom means completeness, wholeness, health, peace, welfare, safety, soundness, harmony, rest. That is what it means. It, it means the absence, the absence of aggravation. Or agitation. It means the absence of agitation. That's a powerful word. Like I said, some people are anointed to annoy and agitate you. Amen. They poking at you. I told a brother yesterday, I told him, I'm, I'm going to share this with you guys. You need to disable that button. Disable the button. You said, what button? That button they always push. And usually it's someone that you care about. Because usually if it's folks you don't care about, it don't matter. And this is how the enemy works. Now, your loved ones can get on your nerve all day or every day. And sometimes you tolerate it because they're family or you married to them or they're your kids. You deal with it, but you don't like it. It's when you get to the point where the, where the folks in your job, even the folks in the church, are aggravating you. Stop giving people space up here. Amen? Disable that button. How do I disable? I need peace. I need to tighten my shoes. Yes, tell somebody tighten up your shoes. Tie your shoes up, boy. Tighten up your shoes, little girl. Tighten up your shoes. Walk in peace because you're going to walk through the valley of shadow of death, but you're going through there with slippers on. Now, you got the, you got the, you got the breastplate on. You got the belt on. And we look down at your feet. And I, I, I told this story before about this young lady who was in my class. And um, what she did was she was, she was, you know, she was a little rough around the edges. And uh, every morning she would be late. She would come in and she would always bring this big bowl of soup. And there was never salt in that soup. Every day, even I was like, you can't eat at your desk. You can't eat it. These grown people. So we had to do a job fair. And, and she came in that one morning. And I was surprised because she always was rough around the edges. She came in. She had a nice blouse, nice white blouse. Amen. It was really nice. She had a nice pencil skirt. Amen. I said, oh, wow, wonderful. And I looked down. And she had on these green fluffy slippers. I said, um, sweetheart, you look very nice. I, I thank you for following what we've told you that you need to do. I said, but you can't wear those slippers. And she said, hmm, these are Michael Kors slippers. I paid $150 for them. It's not appropriate for the situation or the circumstance. That's what I'm saying to you. Some of us are trying to fight this and walk this thing out in our own way. The reason why you keep tripping up 
The reason why we keep stumbling. The reason why you mad. Amen. The reason why you can't let stuff go. Because you've taken off your shoes. This is in the street. You know, I mean, back in the day, y'all sometimes would take off your shoes or shoes, and but you got to tie them up. You can't take piece off. You can't choose to wear when you want to wear. You're going to need them in this season of your life. You're going to need this piece. As we go through what we're going through, we got 20 days for this man to get out. I, God knows what's going to happen. They didn't shut him down on Twitter. God knows what's going to happen when he get back on Twitter. Again, we have to be prepared for these things. Amen. It's the absence of ag uh, agitation or discord. Amen. It's the absence that it comes from a word that means to be complete, full, and perfect. Amen. So we talk about his peace because I don't want to miss this point because I know we got the next Tuesday. Amen. Um, before we meet again. Peace is God's victory over evil. Peace is God's victory over evil. Peace is God's victory over evil. Y'all got to get that. That's what it is. That's what peace is. It is God's victory. It's, he consumes his enemies and releases peace, health, safety, rest, wholeness, and the absence of discourse. That's what God peace for. Fight for the peace of God. Love, peace, and joy. Love, listen, we, 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 we focus on agape, which is important. And we fight in our spiritual relationship and our, and, and, and our to understand salvation. This is what salvation is about. It's about you experiencing and understanding the love of God. I'm not talking about God likes me. I'm talking about an unconditional. When you really get the revelation of that, you don't get the revelation. You get that. You can't have peace till you understand God's love. You're trying to jump to joy. You're trying to get joy, but you don't understand God's love for you. God's love will eradicate every disappointment, every pain you have ever experienced in your life. That's something I would go to my grave with. He would, his love, when you understand and recognize, don't be so focused on folks and people. And I talked to a young lady, I, I was very pleased in the conversation we had, but she made a statement and, and, and she said, I love God and I'm not going anywhere, but I can understand why people stop going to church. I said, because they forget why they swear. This ain't about church, church folks. It ain't about the pastor. It ain't about me. It's about God and your relationship with God. And I always say to people, what the God do you? You're falling back. You're so-called falling back. You're a little sabbatical you taking on the, on the sleep tip because that's what y'all do. You know, I'm just going to be observing. I'm, in a, I'm, I'm just taking. No, no, no. What the God do you? You better fight for your peace because somebody just stole your peace. That's what happened. Amen. They had told you a lie that God don't love you. So now that God's in peace is God's victory over evil. In the climate of peace, in the climate of peace, we can receive instructions from God. The reason why you can't hear from God is too much noise in your head. I told you, know what it is? <laughs> it's those tenants <laughs> that you read into. It's those people that you got in your head. God, I need all of y'all to say, amen, pastor. Amen. 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 It ain't just the ones that's living there now. It's the ones you allowed to live there before. Some of these people that were there when you got there, oh God. You know how it is? If you're a landlord, if you ever own property, sometimes you inherit. <laughs> you inherit the tenants and some things you were born into. You were born into. But I need to go in there. I need to clean out. I need to clean up. I need to get these folks out of my head. Let him go. Let her go. Let them go. Give them to God. Trust God. Believe God. And here come your peace. I told you I used to feel bad. I remember we lived in Blairstown. The kids would just become like young adults. And they was driving back and forth. They just started driving. My wife would be up all night long waiting for them to come home. I'd be over there snoring. Now that I ain't care. I was concerned. But I prayed. I said, God, they're in your hands. God, you got to keep it. Because they would disturb your peace. Listen. When you have peace, you can construct instruction from God. You can't, you can't hear God. You know, it's like you're in the classroom. <laughs> no, now forget the class. We're going to put in the class. We're going to put on church. We're going to put it right on church. Uh, uh, <laughs> Evangelist Daniel. And you got that person. You know who they are sitting next to you in service. And you're trying to hear the word. You're trying to get it. You know God got a word for you. You say, oh, my God, you're on the, you're on the edge of the seat. You, you, you kind of patting your, your leg. And this person, in your ear, did, did I tell you what happened last week? Did I, did? And you're like, I need to change my seat. Some of y'all need to change y'all seat. Don't sit what you've been sitting. You're trying to figure out why I don't have peace, why you can't get instruction from God. Because you're letting people occupy, occupy. What happened yesterday when those people took over, the, took, over, took over the Capitol? What happened? It was disturbance. They couldn't even have their meeting. 
They could not come. They couldn't receive instruction. And that's what the enemy is doing. Amen. And, and, <laughs> and here's the thing. That had to be planned. That security was not security. It was unbelievable. Who's guarding your house? This is why you need the Holy Spirit. This is what comes with the Holy Spirit. If you're not letting the Holy Spirit lead you, you're wondering why the enemy's invading. You're wondering why he's getting in. You got to trust him. Don't let down your guard. You got to trust God and continue to walk in the spirit. When you let down the spirit, now you got these, this national security they had yesterday. I, I'm, it's, that's a whole nother thing. And why the national guards didn't come when they called them? See, that's why you got to live so. That I don't have to get myself together so much. And I understand God's love. I understand God loves me so much. That even when I mess up, even when I come short, I know I can still call his name. I know he'll show up. I've talked about last Sunday about repent. God help me because I can't help myself. Some of y'all right now need to call on the name of the Lord. You feel the enemy got you feeling guilt and shame and feel as though God ain't going to hear your prayers because I messed up. I'm in this situation. I supposed to be, did something about it and, and I keep slipping. It's, it's, it's when you fall into that, once you keep allowing the love of God to come listen to what I'm saying, you let the love of God keep overtaking you, let the love of God overtake you, let the love of God overtake you. All of a sudden you say, I got peace. I got peace. I no longer, that don't bother me anymore. When you're fighting and you're in conflict all the time, that's a lack of peace. And the person don't have to be present. They still... Get rid of, <laughs> get rid of the eight tracks. Get rid of the records. Get rid of the pictures. He's gone. She's gone. It's over. Why are you still holding on to things that remind you of that? The Holy Ghost and Jesus has served them notice. It's been evicted. You've been delivered. I might have done what they said I did, but that's not who I am. You got to stop living that out in your imagination and cast it down because that is what they, those are strongholds. I need peace. I need peace. We can't receive instruction. We can't receive direction. Shalom. Peace reconnects us with God when our minds are full of fear. Shalom, peace, reconnects us with God when our minds are full of fear. I know there's a disturbance all around us. I'm not a fool, I'm not crazy, I'm not oblivious to what we're going through. We're in the middle of a pandemic and people are dying at an unbelievable rate. I think they said a thousand people died in California last week, a thousand people, amen? And and yet, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, to sit here and say you're not going through something i get it but i need peace to go through this valley of shadow of death amen memorize this this scripture it's in isaiah 26 and 3. isaiah 26 and 3. you will keep him in perfect peace somebody say perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because you trust in you because he put trust in you fight for your peace that's why this fast, what the fast does, quickly in the last few minutes, I'm gonna talk about it more in detail. It gets your flesh under control. And in your flesh is your memories, it's your pains, your hurts, and all of those things. It draws you closer to God that I could get, I could get dressed. So I could get dressed. Fasting helps you get dressed in the things of God. Amen, I, I promise you. If you have not been on a fast before, and we're gonna give you detailed instructions on how to go on this fast, amen. You don't just jump into a fast, and that's why I'm talking about it early, to prepare yourself for this, amen. Because part of it is, you know, we abstain from caffeine, we do certain things at certain points, and part of it is personal that you gotta do for yourself. But if you have health issues, we give instructions for that. And a fast is not about competition and about not about race, it's about the intents of your heart, amen. So that scripture 26 and three in Isaiah, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. That's the promise of God. Bank on that. Bank on that. God, you say that, I'm going to keep my mind on you. Fasting is going to help you stay focused. 
fasted. Yeah, you can, in the beginning, you're going to go through some challenges. I'm telling you, it's not impossible. And we're not telling you to do what everybody else do. We're going to tell you to do what you can do. But make the effort and be sincere in what you're trying to do. Amen. Fasting draws you closer to God. It draws you closer to God. Fasting is a very powerful thing. It tells your flesh no. It's telling your spirit yes. You're able to commune better with God during those times as well. Amen. So we're going to encourage you because sometimes you're going fast. And I know down through the years, sometimes it wasn't fully explained to a lot of people. But fasting is very essential part of our work. It's part of our disciplines that draw us close to God. Without that, amen, it makes it very, very hard. It, peace is one of our most powerful weapons. Peace. You think about it. We talk about warfare. Peace is it, one of our most powerful weapons. The, the enemy don't know what to do with you. He don't know how to do with you when you live in peace and refuse to be hassled. I'm telling you, you want to make somebody mad, a person that always like conflict, let them argue by themselves. They'll get mad. They ain't got no choice but to shut up. Amen. Walking in peace means God, Christ's presence is in charge. Walking in peace to live victorious, winning the battle of all the enemy's schemes. We must get to know the Prince of Peace. We must trust him with all that we are and all that we have. Relationship with him, meditating his word and learning his ways brings us peace. It's time to learn his ways. Been in church all your life. Amen. Now let's get some Jesus in your life. Amen. Some more of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing, this time of fellowship. We thank you that we had this opportunity to share what you have said to us, God. And Father, we ask you to touch their hearts and their mind. Amen. As they continue to serve you, they continue to do the things that glorify you. Father, we ask you to strengthen them. And Father, we pray for this nation. We pray for this country. We pray for the leadership, both spiritually and, and, and carnal. We pray for all of them, God, in the name of Jesus. Protect our families, protect our homes as we journey this day, God. We thank you for this. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, I thank you guys. Again, if you want to support the ministry through your giving, here's an opportunity to do that. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. You can become a financial partner. And again, if you want to be a part of this journey, and we also will be doing Bible classes next week and talk about Bible basics, about different things. If you're interested in being a member or a part of coming to Watch Care with Whole Life Community Church, amen, we're going to invite you. I know we can't gather, but virtually, virtually, I promise you that we'll be able to do that. We'll be doing that on Wednesdays. Those are what our classes will consist of. If you have friends, you have neighbors, this is a safe way. Like, listen, we're not going to church building, but I just want you to just tune in and I want you to listen to what the word is saying. Amen. And that's why I give this word the way I do to make it applicable and applicable and palatable. Amen. And again, I love you all. And I pray that you have a blessed day on purpose. Amen. Continue to pray for one another. Pray that God have his way. James, start weaning yourself off that coffee, bro. Because we're going this fast. We got to do this because some things we need to get right. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be a new day. It's going to be a new day at Whole Life Community Church. It's going to be different. Amen. It's going to be different. I'm excited about what God is doing. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.